All right, so we're back here to look at the draft pools after the mega draft here. We're starting with uh, Justin or Pigeon here, uh, as was mentioned by Caleb, looking like a Grixis deck, but mostly blue red here. Um, he was the one to end up with all the Char Forgers. So yeah, so if you looked at Pigeon's, if you looked at Pigeon's draft, he started out in red black and was one of the people who moved into blue as the draft went on. Yeah, so uh, you can see sort of that Black Sun's Twilight as an yeah, early standout. Yeah. Sorting by the rares here. Yeah, these are these are good rares, but not like uh, really insane. He has the Serum Core Chimera, which is the gold card. Uh, yeah, his looks like he has some Dune Movers here for fixing. He has double Volt Charge, Hex Gold. He has Voltage Surge as well from uh, The exciting part to me here is that he's actually got, you know, two Dune Mover for Prism. So if he yeah, wants to splash all the Char Forgers and... Black Sun's Twilight and maybe the Anoint with Affliction, he's got the means to do so, unlike um, maybe some of the other splashes we might see as we keep going. Yeah, we saw Cody passing up Prophetic Prisms uh, quite a bit. Oh, these are his other cards. Okay, hold on. Let me... Yeah, which, I, I mean, uh, again, Prophetic Pr 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 Prism, a bit slow in, you know, for, for all will be one, but yeah. uh, certainly if you're trying to build the three-color deck, you, you got to pay the cost, and that is running some number of Prophetic Prisms. Yeah, so blue red here, gonna you know probably be almost for sure gonna be playing these char forgers. I mean, char forger is really powerful. Yeah. Just it just didn't have a home in uh, in Phyrexia draft, but it looks like it found a home here. So we uh, all right. So we got Ryan D here, slickness. I believe it's his third top eight, and it looks like uh, he's uh, yeah. playing a white blue deck here. Uh, lots of artifacts. Let's see if he has any interesting... Sorry, I'm going to have to here. pause for a second while I deal with some admin stuff. Okay, yeah, so I'll just continue to look over. He has uh, Tekathal, the Inquiry Dominus. He does have the Blue Sun's Twilight, which is uh, one of just the best cards in the entire set. Very scary card. Uh, he has two Eye of Malkator, so this looks like it could be the you know Blue-White Artifacts deck that we, we've come to know from the format. He has some Skull Bombs to possibly trigger that. Is two annex entry, so uh, yeah, looking like a pretty nice, yeah, mandible justicia, which is like kind of one of the two drops of choice for that particular deck. Let's see if there's anything else of note here as far as removal. He's got some vanish into eternities, so a bit clunky removal here. Uh, mesmerizing dose is good, yeah, Tamio's completion, so not too, too much removal. He does have the Kamigawa gold card here. Um, Whenever one or more vehicles attack, you get a 1-1. So basically whenever this attacks, he gets a 1-1. Like, pretty good. Not bad at all. So nice little white-blue deck here. Three Indoctrination Attendant, which was a card that seemed to keep getting better as the weeks went on in our league. Every time I saw it, it was it was more impressive than, than the week before. Yeah, Chrome Prowlers, Malkator's Watchers, all the cards, all the commons that you want for uh, this type of deck. There's uh, the Skip as well, which might also potentially make a little... Uh... Oh, the Rube Skiff. All right, thank you for that. We got Evan here jumping in for a moment. All right, so looking now at Jordan M. He's going to be playing green-black here. He got the uh, he got the nice gold card here from uh, Kamigawa, the Gloom Shrieker, Necrogen Rot Priest. So I imagine as green-black was in that format, he'll be looking to get some Toxic going. He has a Nissa, <laughs> which we mentioned before. Two Silvac Battle Chairs. So he's got top of his curve is all full of big things. Satin. He's got some nice removal here to an Annihiling there. He did not get any Anoint with Affliction. Uh, we saw Cody take two and uh, Justin has one. Uh, I was looking if there's any other rares of note here. Not too, too much. Tyvar Stan's a good one for interaction. Yeah, uh, as far as his creatures go, just a bunch of toxic creatures here. All the Stalkers. Pestilent Siphoner, Blightbelly, yeah, so this is a toxic deck, basically. He ended up with all these ambulatory edifices that we saw, a Cody and, you know, I guess other people not wanting four of those, so you can pick off some you, you do got a feel, though, that this deck yeah, is, if you, look at the two, if you look at the two-drop slot, though, if you sort by CMC, I, I feel like it's a bit low on... Uh, on early aggressive creatures. Like, yeah, Blanche Wright Stalker was playable here, but was never a card you were all that excited about putting in your deck. Yeah, I mean, th these are the two drops you want. You just, I think you want more of them. But, uh, yeah. but I mean, overall, it looks like, you know, the, the deck is doing what, what the color combo is supposed to be doing. So And to be fair, it has a number of one drops, so that sort of helps the early game a bit. Yeah. Uh, 
is one. And it can just sort of looks good. Wait to draw Nissa and then win the game that way. All right, so on to. I just imagine this is Raphael with his. Uh, yes. Being being a jokester here. So uh, Raphael was in sort of teamer colors for a while and then pulled out of blue. I think once he started getting passed to by Jesse and Cody, who were both into blue. I mean, his blue cards are pretty poor, so. <laughs> Yeah. Looks like, yeah, green red with the triple Miglos here at the top and some, uh, well, yeah. maybe we will get some oil blazing uh, happening in our today. He he ended up with two anointers. So he's, <laughs> so he's got this, um, he's basically an oil deck with some other good stuff going on. There's some good beef in here. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Lattice Blade Mantis, Oil Butcher Troll. Um, he's he's got an early game sack, Revel Salvo. Yeah, that's Stare a good Fang, late game item. Scrap Gorger, just... A lot of the uncommons you you are looking for for this type of deck. It is missing. It looks like the uh, furnace strider, which is actually I think the sort of the, pre the really premium five drop, the one that gives itself haste and then it gives your next turns play haste as well. Yeah, um, and he's there. also got in his sideboard two Urgrask's anointers, which he's not even uh, running. Yeah, uh, this is still, like, yeah, like the th that that's it, that that might not be the final deck, so we don't mm. know yet, but. Um, yeah, so yeah, Green Red, I, I, he figured it yeah. out. I guess these these helped him figure it out, <laughs> as they might. Uh, mm -hmm. So, sort of your your oil deck. I mean, not everything's oil here, but a lot of it is. Yeah, and some few pieces of removal here. Probably probably uh, about enough. All right, so let's look at Jesse here. Uh, right, so Jesse um, started out in white-black. We first picked an Invoke Justice, um, and then that's, that's <laughs> muddled along for a while before getting out of the business of drafting white cards uh, and into the business of drafting uh, blue cards. Yeah, and so, it looks like his blue cards are, you know, kind of. There's some powerful gold cards in here, like the yeah, Venser, so, the yeah, Kaido. He was able to get hybrid. all the gold cards that, and Cody never saw any of them. Yeah, uh, let's see what else he's got. So Twisted Embrace. Uh... Well, he's got some removal here. There were lots of experimental auguries going around. Yeah, I do love this pick, Invoke Justice. It just did not work out. That's he's got fine. a bunch of Testament bearers. So uh, You got to ask, right? Like, if he just stuck to his guns and, and closed his eyes and kept drafting white, how does this deck look at the end? Yeah, I think him and Cody basically split the blue-black card, so neither of them ended up yeah. with exactly probably what they were intending to. The question is, uh, is he going to splash this forge? Maybe, maybe not. Sure, he'll come to the right decision here. He he did end up with the the seven drop Ovika as well, and two Serum Core Chimeras. So there's some good cards that are splashables. Just whether he will, he has pr Prism and an Expanse. So we'll see what he decides to do. But yeah, him and him and uh, Cody just taking cards from each other. Basically, yeah, that's a good point. He doesn't have. Drafts. It's a little rough. He doesn't have the most tools to splash. Like I think. I think you're at the level where I would splash Forge and Goliath, but maybe not the Chimeras. I don't think they're quite powerful enough to justify yeah. the kind of raw splash that his deck is going to have here. All right, so two more to go here. Pure Mark, who looks like he had a clear lane here of white-green based on yeah, no, he, the surrounding colors. He was there from uh, from pack one and, and never left. He's yeah, got, well, he three Phyrexian injectors. He, 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 went, he went in on it. So let's see if there's any headliner rares here. Okay, so he ends up with the Shigeki that... Uh, yeah. Cody didn't want. It was very much the, the second best card in that pack. Like This card is very good. Uh, these yeah. other rares, not exactly what you want. Yeah, um, it's a bit unfortunate here. It looks like he never, if you look for raw power level, there's not that much here. He's going to have to rely on just synergy and having a good low curve. I'm guessing it's going to be a toxic deck based on like... this, right? <laughs> based yeah, on that, two, it looks two, like it's going to have to be a toxic deck. So Two Tiber stands might actually be the best card. He's in got the deck. Slaughter Singer. Let's see if he has the uh, the... So he has one chorus, one duelist. Yeah, he's he's missing some of these. Uh, he's got two Goshintai's here. So if if the game goes late, he has that. Oh, you know what? Option. He was getting he was getting passed to by Trevor, the last player we're going to look at, who was pretty firmly in Boros. Uh, so the good aggressive white creatures, I think, would have been getting nabbed. Yeah, uh, so they not, got to him. not quite the critical mass of toxic creatures that you would necessarily want, but these just make everything into a toxic creature. The, the injectors. Uh, True. Yeah, so he's got yeah. some... He's got some good removal, good so, tricks. Well, you know, I will say he's got that going for him. 
Yeah, Vanish into <laughs> Eternity, not really the one, they, not really the removal you want. Planar Disruption is good, though. So, um, yeah, White Green looks to be toxic. I mean, with the injectors, basically everything can be toxic, and you're almost always going to get one every game if you have if he does play the three. Uh, yeah, you got a nice little fixer land here. Always, always, always a treat <laughs> when you get to get a, a dual land, especially in Frexia where there were none to be had. Just having those mana bases, having those mana bases where you have an equal number of each basic instead of having to pick which one to have like nine, <laughs> like eight, eight, one versus nine, eight is just so so much more satisfying. Right. So we got our Boros uh, aggressive player here with uh, oh yeah, first top eight and uh, looking to. He's a he came in here as a man with a plan. Uh, yeah. It looks like, and that plan was to try to kill people very, very quickly. Yeah, so only rare he ended up uh, with that he's going to play is the Kemba, but that is quite good. So we'll see how many um, we'll see how many weapons he ended up with. Uh, oh, he's got a lot of the equipment here, like uh, Hexward, Halberd, Bart, Batterfist, three Miriam Bardishes, although yeah, I, so I suspect those idea. are going to get cut. Uh, and then a couple arts. actually reconfigured cards. Is sort of arts is, a good, is, a good, is a good one, too. So how does Touch Kemba work... Room. So Kemba works, I believe, where whenever a cat comes in, you can yeah. actually sort of reconfigure the rabbit battery onto it. Uh, you can, you it, can equip any equipment to it, and it also gives it yeah. creatures plus one plus one. So you're making pretty powerful cats. And he does have the removal here to to back up what he's doing. Yeah, he uh, yeah. looks like a nice one here. It does seem uh, like most of his cards get like stonewalled by a 3-4. Yeah, he's got the sort uh, of striders. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. he has like the three three menace. You put a weapon on that; it's getting, it's getting in. Yeah, he's got all the. He's got the. He's got the Upriser Renegade. That works well with the Firmiridin cards, right? Is that the is that the modified one? We were yeah. At? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, you 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 play two modified creatures, and this this guy's a five three. So why not? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So he's got a lot. He he he's one of the few that actually got the artifact synergies. We, I think he's yeah. kind of the only person who actually. Um, Picked up on the artifact synergy. I mean, Ryan ended up with a white blue deck, but most of the artifact stuff was not from Kamigawa. Like blue, blue and white weren't as much into the artifacts. It was more like black and red, if I recall, uh, in Kamigawa. So he did end up with an artifact deck, mm -hmm. but didn't not making amazing use of the artifact matters cards from from Kamigawa. But yeah, looks like, like the, uh, looks the... like here he, uh, you know, Trevor very much is uh, Leon and Lightbringers. You. you yeah, they are pretty okay in this type of deck. I, I, I remember though, where like the, where the weapons well. Yeah, He's trying to pump your mandible, too. trying to pump your mandible just just shares by playing the red and white equipment in <laughs> in one always felt kind of underwhelming to me though. Yeah, so uh, he does have a little toxic package here: double crawling chorus, triple duelist. He has a flensing raptor. So I don't think he cares about toxic at all. Yeah. Like I don't see a corrupted card and I, mean, I think he's going to kill his opponent with he has damage of the mites. he has two charges of the mites so you know there, there there's a possibility he could uh if he gets in gets off to a hot start could actually get some poison but it's definitely not the not the main plan of this deck so uh uh those are the seven other players and uh we'll be back to begin round one shortly <laughs> 